Well, the State Department is facing mounting pressure to label those attacks by the radical Islamic terrorists of ISIS that are targeting Christians as an official genocide. A new comprehensive report from the Knights of Columbus sheds more light that exposes the continuing atrocities, detailing information about the murders of more than a thousand Iraqi Christians, along with horrendous first-person accounts of beheadings, rapes, enslavement, and torture. What do we do? Mark Dubowitz is executive director with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. You know, Mark, the White House has been saying uh, that, and this is a quote, that the legal determination has not yet been reached to call this a genocide. First, uh, I guess that must be true, and if so, why? Well, the White House has been punting on this because they don't want to make this determination because a determination of genocide means they're going to have to actually act to defend the, the Middle East Christians from extermination. But there's a March 17th deadline imposed by Congress, and they have to act soon. What do you think they're going to do? It's hard to know. I mean, it's, uh, it's very rare for a White House to actually impose this genocide designation while co a conflict is ongoing. It happened in 2004 under George W. Bush with a conflict in Sudan. But the White House is under immense pressure. And listen, the facts are the facts. The religious minorities, most notably the Christians of the Middle East, are being exterminated by ISIS. And something has to be done. Let me read uh, one paragraph from the report. I mean, if you go through the report, it's on, it's on the Knights of Columbus website. I would urge our viewers to go through it. You, you get these chilling first-person accounts, women, mothers, wives, uh, of when they come in and grab their, their husbands. Uh, I mean, just stuff uh, that is just you thought didn't happen today. It is time for the United States to join the rest of the world by naming it and by taking action against it as required by law. ISIS's activities are well known. Killings, rapes, torture, kidnappings, bombings, and the destruction of religious property and monuments are, in some instances, a matter of public record. Murder of Christians is commonplace. Many have been killed in front of their own families. But, Mark, you know, what, what do we do? What can the U.S. and the administration do uh, to, to try and stop ISIS? Is it even possible to try and stop this potential genocide from even continuing? Well, look, the Obama administration has, unfortunately for years, turned a blind eye to the extermination of Christians in the Middle East by radical Islamists, not just ISIS. The reality is that the only Christian community in the Middle East today that is safe and secure and thriving is the Christian community in Israel. And other Christian communities around the Middle East, after a thousand-year history, are, are dwindling, in some cases disappearing. The Obama administration can set up safe havens for Christians, and it can use the full resources of the U.S. government military resources, legal resources, to actually protect these people. But it, the first step is to call it what it is, which is a genocide. And it is the extermination of, of Christians, of Yazidis, of Turkmen. And it is long past you for this administration to use its moral force, political force, and military force to defend the Christians of the Middle East. Because we will wake up one day and there will be no Christians left, Eric. Well, the president has been resisting this. I mean, Hillary Clinton wants to set up those, those uh, safe zones, the safe humanitarian corridors, for example, in Syria. So why do you think the president has been, uh, you know, uh, not taking action on this? Uh, obviously concerned about American lives and American boots on the ground and getting us into another war. Well, I think he doesn't believe that there's a direct threat to U.S. national security interests represented by ISIS. But, I mean, I think that is a delusion. Clearly, Syria and Iraq under ISIS, under Assad, have actually become a, a hotbed of extremism, terrorist attacks in France, terrorist attacks in the United States, the millions of refugees that have been now weaponized that are flooding into Europe and, and neighborhoods in the Middle East. And so you've got a serious American national security challenge. The president has walked away from that, and uh, we're having to deal with, with the consequences. Well, uh, Congress has set this deadline of March 17th, five days to go, so we'll check back with you, Mark in five days and see what the White House decides, genocide or not. Mark Dubowitz, Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Eric.